Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So I've talked about S3 and S4 object and object-oriented programming in our last week. Today I want to deal with one of the most typical examples of an S4 object in R, which is for any of the bioinformaticians outside. Should be common to you, it's called the SE object from Bioconductor. So before I go into what is a summarized experiment object, let's talk a little bit about why are we dealing with objects. So one of the early challenges of bioinformatics is that uh, people will store data in a standard database structure or they don't even store it in the database structure and they just store it whatever way that they want it. And that creates a problem when you want to communicate a data from let's say one university to another. So uh, object creates a very, very strict infrastructure and a way of how data is being put together in a package or an object so that when you send out, let's say, uh, the three university is doing the same experiment and they want to confirm the information with each other, they can simply sh um, encode the data into SE object and then they can share it to each other and they can all do the same analysis and they all will be able to share the same analysis pipeline without doing all the, the, the cleaning up and you know restructuring and change the name of the column and so on and so forth. So this is why object is very commonly used for the communication of data, uh, especially in the bioinformatics world as well as other like, internet world basically. So what it is about. So an S, so SE uh, is an actually an S4 object from Bioconductor. I'll link a link to the last week video on why it's an S4 object and how to actually manipulate it in R. So uh, SE object has three main sections that actually corresponds to a different component of an experiment. So the first one is the assay. So the assay is the data, in this case, the expression data of each of the gene and each of the sample. While column data is actually for sample information. So one example will be the assay will be, if you're doing, let's say, the microarray, your assay will be the individual signal from your individual gene for your individual, sam for your individual sample. Sounds confusing, you'll be clearer later on. While well, the sample information will only be something that is known by the researcher. What kind of cell you're putting it in, what kind of treatment you're doing it in, um, what kind of condition you subject them to, what's the time frame, and so on and so forth. So assay usually come from the machine, column data usually come from the researcher. So the last one is actually row data, or sometimes called row ranges in some other packages. Um, the, so raw data contains a list of genetics information um, that is actually pre-compiled by, by big communities such as the NCBI, such as CAPE, such as the Ensemble, and so on. So raw data is some is not something um, built up by the researcher itself, but most of the time um, something that comes directly from database. Recap, essay come from the machine, column data come from researcher, row data come from the database. So this is one of the example of the assay, which is the experimental data. So in this case, we're not gonna go for a real experiment, but we're gonna run a, a normal, just a random number of matrices. So it's a six by 10 um, array of numbers. So what this is supposed to represent is that we have six different samples, one, two, three, four, five, six on the column, and one, two, and ten rows. So that ten rows is supposed to represent ten different genes. Six sample, ten genes. Okay. So the second one will be column data. So this is the sample information. So um, I also include a code to how would you be able to um, build this structure up. So it's actually represented by a data frame where you have the sample one, two, three, four, five, six. What are the condition they're in, A, B, C, D, E, and what are the tre treatment they're in, and 0 to 1, and so on. So you can add more of the condition or more of the treated as you please, as long as you follow the similar structure. And the name of the header isn't exactly that important. Just make sure that when you're doing analysis, uh, you have to use the same name. But it doesn't have to be, let's say, sample. You can spell it with an S or without an S. It doesn't affect the overall SE structure. Okay, so the next one will be the raw data. So in this case, I also include a short code to actually download the database from uh, one of the package over here, which is ENSDB HSapiens V86. So you can see on the last uh, line here, we have actually G1 to 10. So 
basically we're only taking the first 10 genes out of the, the database to be used into this example because here we only have 10 genes in our matrix. So in theory, SE object, you should have the same number of row for your essay and together with your row data. While if you only have six samples over here, while you have six samples in your column data, you should correspond to six different columns in your essay. So this way is the sample data from column data. This is from your row data and that is your expression from, from, the, from the gene and so on, from database, so on. Okay, so combining all three of them in the object relatively simple. You just use, I was, I'm not too sure if this is classified as a constructor, but you can use this function to actually construct the assay, which is actually equals to whatever that we have done earlier. Just put it as a list and column data is equals to the column data as done the code before, the slide before, and the row ranges equals to the row ranges, which is what we have construct over there. And then all three would join into an S, E object and this is how you can construct your SE object from scratch but most of the time we don't really do that and we just download it for analysis purpose so unless you're trying to submit an SE object into the package you might not need to do that okay so yeah that's basically just what that what does the above SE object mean mostly for people that are reading on the slide six sample 10 G so the expression of the all 10 so you can also, you know, access, so similar to a, a list, I'll say, as for object, you can also use um, a, a add sign to, to access whatever information inside. And there are certain function that is actually um, specific to this as for object. So one of the example here is the M calls. So M calls actually to uh, extract the metadata or the genetic information of each of the genes and not just that you can also let's say you want to add another scoring so this is another parameters that as researchers want to add in into the metadata for analysis purposes you can also do that with the command below so i'm showing you that in the in the thing later so um so once you have created that object the great thing about it is that you can actually use a lot of standard function that other people has to do right as long as it's the same it's very similar in terms of structure and naming of the header you can just use whatever function that they created so i've actually created an example here where you can select the ranges of the gene based on uh, a certain range on the chromosome mm -hmm. and you can also download uh, uh, summarize experiment data from other things. So the rest of the code is just kind of an example of what will be running. So in this case, uh, end, end product, we want to download uh, SE object data. Uh, we want to uh, subset it a little bit. Uh, we want to do some of the inspection. And in the end, we want to visualize a matrix using a, a p heatmap function. So let's go to our R Studio over here. So similarly, you can always find all the codes that I use and slide that I use in the video description down below. Just download it and install all the packages and you should be able to run the code on your computer directly. Okay, so I have created our markdown file. Similarly, just open it in the R Studio and, and just press the run column run button over here on the chunk to run the chunk. So you can see that uh, library just Make sure you first of all include the library for the summer experiment. And this will be the column data that we talk about in the slide just now. Six different sample, different three different condition and two different treatment. And this is how you can actually get the, the column data. So this is the row ranges. So if you actually run row ranges directly into the console, you can also see that these are all the information that within that and these are the information that we want to add into our SE data later. So within the gene, we also have let's say the ranges. We have the gene ID, gene name, uh, gene biotype, so you can call it system and symbol and uh, some entrance ID. Okay, so just all the information about the gene basically. So it doesn't have to be just the name. It can be multiple things together with one. So this is the expression uh, array that we talked about just now. All the or the expression of different gene, different sample, and we combine all of them into an SE object. So you should see the SE directly in your environment over here. 
and you can actually go in and inspect each of the one, each of the different elements within within the whole object, like like with the arrow key. So you can do that because it's a res relatively small object, and you might encounter some problem if you're opening up a big object later on. Okay, so so similar with all the sort of S four object, you can actually just use certain functions such as essay name. So when you run essay name, you actually get the name of the essay. So in this case, it's SPRS, not very interesting. But uh, we can also let's say um, inspect what is what is the information of our row ranges and assign let's say a new parameter so score over there. So you can see in the end we have a score system and it's just some random number that we put it in. It doesn't really make any difference. So this is just demonstration of the code rather than a real analysis. Okay, so the next one is actually just to select the ranges based on 25,000 to 40,000. So all this code, what do they do? It's just to subset a different, um, subset the, the original 10 gene so that we only get gene within that certain range. So we can actually see in the end, we only have three gene over there. So we have the 72, 73, da, 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 or so on. Okay, so from 10, that range, there's only three. So you can do very similar stuff with a lot of things and there's a lot of function over the place. So let's go in and try to manipulate a real object over here. So um, we are going to download a, a actual R environmental data from a website over here. So um, how do you do that is that uh, you just you can either run the code directly. Just remember that if you run it the second time, it will not work properly. And sometimes based on the naming system of your computer, uh, R might not like when you have, let's say, a a space in the middle of your folder and so on. So one other way is that you can use the import button over here, go to environment, open, and then open the file um, like this, and open, and then you should load that into your environment. Uh, otherwise, I have encountered some magic number errors when I try to load this uh, specifically. Okay, so when we're done, uh, when we're done with our data, you should actually get greeted with RSE gene object, which we're gonna change the name to RS object, uh, RSE object. So slightly, so there's two things that that is done accomplished here. First is that we detach the original object and we clone one that we need to use for the rest of the analysis. Secondly, we also leave the original object untouched. So in case you did something wrong with the analysis and delete everything, the original RSE gene object will still be there and you don't have to download it again and again and again and again. So it, it keeps things a lot easier. Okay, so the first thing is the column data. So from RSE, we can see from column one to column six is uh, all the name of the gene. Like I say earlier, it doesn't have to be in the same file name, uh, information and so on. Different um, people that are running experiment is gonna have a slightly different way of them putting it together. As long as all the column data uh, would have the the, simil the information that that they want to put in, I I can, I can name it that way because um, you can you can get unlimited amount of information in. So people put in different things based on different experiment that they run. Okay, so so the second one is let's say the class function where it actually just show you what are what what is this thing. So this thing is a uh, is like a um, what they call a character range of this 24. So this is the difference, the 24 sample name, okay? So if you run a class, it will just tell you what kind of object it is, which is a compressed character, this, and so on. So you can also subset it to know that sample one to three is this one. So instead of actually run exporting, so when you have one single bracket, you will export it as a, as a, object where well, you have uh, not object it would it's a as an yeah I kind of in this case maybe an object but you when have two bracket over here you will actually export it as a, a list so it's a more simple uh, export okay so it depends on what you want to do down downstream but single column you maintain its original structure while double bracket you will actually just export it as a list something like that okay so what they do here is that they'll try to rename the, the condition, the treatment to actually um, 
um, normalize the naming so we can do that calculation later on. Uh, just a demonstration of what you can do and all that thing. So next one, row ranges, very similar, just to inspect what are the, these are the gene, uh, these are symbol and so on and so forth. And we can also look at the sequence information where you look at whether they are, what is the length, what is the circular and genome and so on. So just multiple, multiple different metadata that you have within the experiment, uh, within the really object. So instead of doing that, you can also go into RSC gene and just maybe I want to look at the assay, just put an assay and yeah, it doesn't work like that. And you just go to data and you open data. So yeah, some would not be allowing you to, to open directly. In this case, uh, yes, we can know this is a list, but you know, you give a lot of nonsense warning messages. You can kind of just ignore. Okay, so if you want to get account data, this is where you get account data of all the gene and all the sample. And I believe this will be a bit more familiar to people that, that's going to run the, that, that's running this kind of system on the back end. Okay, so what we try to do next is that we have a 508037 different gene over 24 different samples. Remember, we're downloading this uh, object from the internet. It is not the same as what we created earlier. Okay, so next what we're trying to do is to get this data matrix and use pHeatMap to actually plot the graph around it. So the next one actually we, we're going to demonstrate is that uh, we're going to use DSEC2 and create a DDS object and VTS object. You can actually see what is the situation over here. Um, the purpose of those and purpose of, of changing the origin expression data into a DDS and a VDS is to make sure we have a proper normalization and representation of the data rather than just the raw expression, which is usually not ideal. And these two string replace is just to replace the original uh, semicolon into underscore so that it will not affect our calculation later on. Um, in this case, you can choose to remain or remove them, but usually it is better to only use underscore rather than uh, the colon because it might interfere with some of the function later on. And I don't know what experiment you are running. Okay, so then, then it's very easy. So we just run a row variable into RV, nothing much. And all this that what they are trying to do is just to re restructure the data you know, get all their condition and treatment in so that we can properly labor on in the P heat map down below. Okay, so the, the rest of the, so P heat map is relatively straightforward. It's just running a pretty heat map export to the user. Okay, so this will be the heat map. So just now what we are doing here with Arno column. So annotation column is just to get the treatment on the condition up there uh, nicely so that you can have a nicer graph and get the proper uh, legend over here. While well, pHeatMap will usually handle all the clusterings and grouping and so on. So that's practically that's practically how you do you how would you actually visualize a uh, account matrix based on an online downloaded SE object. And basically, what an SE object is just an object from Bioconductor that people just put all the experimental data together rather than you know spread out all over the place like what we did last time. So an assay object mostly had three parts. The assay, which is the experimental data obtained from let's say the sequencing machine. The column data, which is the sample information um, produced by or created by the researcher. And we have the raw data, which is usually all the database and gene information uh, consolidated, summarized by the database as well as the um, previous studies and so on. So that's practically the summarized experiment, uh, the SE object from Bioconductor, and I hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you next time. Goodbye.